rigs are an interesting thing. It's always a constant topic, and people are like, oh, Pompano rigs, uh, single drop, you've got those Carolina rigs. But did you know that there are other better suited rigs for other fish? What if I told you there was a set rig that was really, really good for redfish? Or maybe for shark. Of course you knew shark, right? But we're getting ahead of ourselves. This week, we're talking to Rogue Reels, and you're listening to Finding Demo Surf Fishing. The game of rigs is... I mean, it's just a fun game, and I, for one, love rigs. Uh, I just have a bad collection. I don't know what's going on here. But this week, we are talking to Rob Foster of Rogue Reels. So, Rob, thank you so much for coming on today. Welcome to the show. What's up, Brian? Hey, Thanks buddy. for having me, man. Yeah, man. So here comes the fun stuff. So you are in South Carolina, right? Correct. Okay, cool. And the fishing, I know is very different from South Carolina to the panhandle of Florida. I mean, that goes without saying. I know that. But what got you into tying rigs uh, up there? Well, it actually started in the Northeast um, back in the mid-90s. I started doing rigs for stripers and for uh, bluefish. Oh, nice. Uh, Toothy critters. (laughs) Right, right. And you... Bluefish were fit. I mean, uh, stripers were finicky, so you like to use lighter mono, but the bluefish would tear those rigs to shreds. So you had to try and find a happy medium because they were almost always going to be around each other. Not necessarily, but for most of the time, they were around each other. That's what really got me doing it. Okay. Um, years and years ago, for myself and for my friends. All right. Yeah. Stripers, man, I, I wish we had that down here. I'm originally from New England, so it, it's kind of a cool thing to see them. But I, I wish people down here could get their hands on some of those because that, that's a fighting fish right there. That That's a beast of a fish. It's um, Well, there's lots in freshwater down here, but I, I caught a 22-pounder in a river here. Are you serious? Um, yeah, <laughs> oh, on a live herring. And I, I mean, to, I would struggle to catch a 22 up there, but when I when I came back home to South Carolina, about 15 years ago, guys were starting to catch 50s and 60s from the shore up there. So it was really starting to ramp up even. I mean, it's been around for decades and decades, but right. it was really starting to ramp up up there. And But then I came down and discovered redfish. So it just changed my whole world. Oh, I can imagine, man. Uh, I, I've, I personally, um, I have some of your rigs. Thank you so much for letting me uh, test them out. And you, uh, you're also part of the uh, the giveaway at Panhandle Surf Fishing, so those people are um, are going to be getting hooked up here soon. That that's going to be going live on that one. Um, I got to say, man, when I opened up the package, I was like, "Is this metal? What the, what what is this?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, oh yeah, this is actually." Good. I I got really excited because I, I can't count the amount of times I've been broken off by toothy critters. I mean, I, I've up my leader. I've gone. You know, normally I fish with thirty pound mono or or fluoro. And I'm like, man, I got to do something. But your rigs, oh, man, there's no way that these things are going to chew it off. And this past weekend, um, I went out fishing, and I used your one of your redfish rigs and took it out and put a big head on it just to see what would happen. And I picked up one ginormous catfish, which I was surprised at. Uh, it was probably the biggest cat I'd ever caught, but they were running thick that day, so I wasn't surprised. But then I pulled in a shark, and I was like, oh, man, look at this thing. It was like I could have fished that thing for days. There, there was no damage to that thing at all. It was great. So, hell yeah on the quality, man. Great job. Man, I, I wish I could like post it up more. I'm just, it, it, it is an awesome rig, man. Ugh. So, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, you go. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm like gushing it's, here, and I'm like putting you in a box of like, ha ha, you're awesome. And you're like, oh crap, thank you. <laughs> Most people that aren't from the southeast or over the Gulf and from Texas, if you go up into further up North Carolina and all the way up, they're like, what are you doing with these heavy? Why are you using such heavy line? Yeah. But but people that catch big redfish get it. For one, they're not picky. Right. They're not they're not they're not squeamish. Uh, they don't you don't have to have light line. 
and inevitably you're gonna catch sharks when big reds are around yeah so that's that's really where it came from dude i can't wait i mean i i'm super excited because the red run's gonna start here pretty soon um mid-september we start getting our reds back towards yeah mid-september and end of it and into october uh i I know I'm fishing with your redfish rig on one rod specifically the entire time because I am. I mean, I'm going heavy for it, going in with the crab knuckles or half a crab. Anyway, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Man, they love <laughs> they love them crab knuckles, man. <laughs> yeah, there's no doubt about it. No, not at all. Okay, so I've been gushing here about the redfish rig. Let's talk about the rigs themselves. What kind of uh, what types of rigs do you make? Um, I've. Mainly redfish rigs and shark rigs. I call. I have a small shark rig. I got some other casting rigs. However, we've caught bluefish, uh, freshwater cats. You know, forty pound catfish. Dang, um, big cat. I got guys. Yeah, got guys using them for snapper. Uh, got guys using them for. I mean, I got a guy caught a four hundred eighty pound tuna off one of those redfish rigs with a larger hook on it. That was just recent. What was that uh, last yeah. month? Right. That was, yeah, about probably five or six weeks ago. Dude, that was an awesome picture. I mean, I'm going to have to link that back in the description here because I, I, that is a serious fish right there, and it held that. I mean, again, another testament of your stuff. So that, that's awesome. I'm sorry. Keep, keep right, going. Right. Um, so I, I do a lot of custom stuff, but I don't show so much of that on social media and online. Okay. Um, my bread and butter for my little company, that is, is more fun than anything um, is the redfish rigs, the small shark rigs, um, and the casting shark rigs, the six and the eight footers. And then, of course, I got a, a handful of guys that just reorder and reorder custom stuff I make for them, just different links and all that kind of stuff. But um, that mainly for mainly for larger game fish for the surf. That that's that was what I wanted for me, and it just kind of turned into more. You know, just Guys are, I mean, I just can't believe some of the pictures the guys send me and say, yeah, I was at an oil rig um, almost on the Mexico line and catching these red snapper with my small shark rig, <laughs> stuff like that. And it's just, it's absolutely insane to me, but I just, I love it. And, and I put a handwritten note in almost every order. At least I try to, and, you know, say, hey, if you want, send me some pictures. And some of the stuff I'm getting back is I'm blown away. I got a couple of guys in Texas that are just catching these monster big uglies, these huge black drum, 45 inches, 46 inches. And they look, you know, they're, they weigh more than the redfish do. Yeah. And uh, they're loving them. One thing I do I love also, them. Go, well, go ahead. Go ahead. I also started as, as many times where I'll throw in a, a redfish rig as a, as a sample freebie to go with a larger order. And that's helped. The, the guy that caught the tuna. It was that was a little freebie that I threw in. He had bought a bunch of other stuff for sharks. Nice. And I threw that in, and, and that's how that happened. <laughs> hey, your shark rig. You, you, I, well, I remember pulling that shark rig bag out, and I was like, "What kind of hook is this? This is a mon. I mean, that is a big damn hook." But I get yeah. it because you I mean big hook, big fish. I mean, and you're going after right. the sharks. So your uh, your shark rigs are. Uh, I like your shark with your small shark rigs. I, I I thought that the design of it was perfect. Um, I especially love the coating. Uh, you know, there's a what is it you're using? Um, not plastic. The little or the sleeve. The, the yeah, the little shrink. Mm -hmm. uh, the shrink sleeve. Yeah, I, just I, so you I, don't rip your hands up. Yeah. Yep, dude, dude, that is brilliant. Like I, I as soon as I pulled it out of the back, I was like, oh, this is nice. But I love the fact that your rigs are also castable. You you do you have set up ones for casting. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and I'm not the only person doing it. I certainly didn't invent it. I just uh, like to pay attention to detail. But there's some there's some guys making some really nice stuff out there. Oh, absolutely. Of course. Yeah. I mean, and I appreciate that you're actually <clears throat> humble enough to be like, yeah, you know, I'm not the only guy. But the, and for me, I, I I don't know what it is. But when I saw that, that put that that put a little bit higher for me on, on Rogue Reels. I was like, you know what? I love this right here. Because I've used a couple other companies, um, and I like their rigs as well, but the castability really turned me for you on that one. So uh, sure, I, I sure. really liked that. I was really appreciative of that. Well, so good, your, your rigs work really well in South Carolina. You, you've told me that before, you know, nailing the reds. Um, and your fishing is a lot different up there between your surf. Um, when I was there as a kid, we were in Goose Creek, and the only time I got to go fishing was, you know, in the back back rivers and all that stuff. 
and you know live shrimp or minnow or whatever you had you, you, know, you just went out there with a small hook with this though with your setup you, you're in south carolina especially you're really going to nail some monster fish out there um, right where you where you were um, is probably the most popular fishing in in the low country of south carolina is all the the not even brackish but all the saltwater rivers and marshes and i mean just in the charleston area alone there's 170 uh inshore guides just in charleston yeah um like in downtown but um there's it seems like there's two types of fishing in south carolina fishing the marshes and the rivers and and the edges of the beaches uh, and pier and surf fishing uh-huh. and the pier and surf fishing frankly you you go into a lot of places and, and I hate to say Walmart and stuff like that. There's just there's junk. They don't have any. That's why I started doing it 25 years ago. There's just junk on the walls, and you buy. You know we'll buy anything. Am I right? You oh, and I will go into. We will buy anything if we think we're going to catch more fish. We'll buy it. Yeah. And and I got sick of doing that. But um, so that what what I'm I am I'm a quant a, a, a quality guy, not a quantity guy. I probably release about. 98% of my fish. So I really, I'm there for the thrill of the, I want, I want the, the drug, the tug. Because you know? <laughs> the tug is the drug and we can all right. agree to that. Right. Yeah, that's really, I mean, I love catching brim, you know, in a pond, but at the same time, I really, I love catching big fish. That's my favorite thing. It's hard not to, man. I mean, you get that rod yeah. that bowing over and you're like, oh, fish on, fish yeah. on. But but on the on the same on the other hand, you still I'm just as happy catching a species I've never caught that's 15 inches long. Yeah, it's just like holy, how you know I love that too. But yes, South Carolina, how much different it is. It is, but these rigs have worked really well for me. Um, but the the response I'm getting is crazy to me from Alabama, North Carolina, Texas, Florida, Louisiana. Texas and Florida is blowing me away. I cannot believe how many people buy things from me from Texas and Florida. It's because you're making good stuff, man. Don't oh, yeah. come on. Yeah. You, you, don't not, believe I'm it. Just, you're, you're good. Well, there's there's <laughs> there's so much out there, and they're they're having. And nowadays, people don't even look at what the location. It's all about. It's. I mean, they don't care where the product's coming from. They're, you know, so it's a it's a way different thing having a web store compared to a compared to selling in a brick and mortar. Right. But it's 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 worked really really well in lots of different places and including freshwater which just applications i never even considered that I, they would ever be used right Makes so sense. it's it's yeah so it's i'm i'm just really pleased with the with the response it's fun it's so it's so much fun so a couple – let's go off on that one there. So your, what has been one of your favorite reported catches? I, I, I know you got the tuna. That, that I mean, that that's a hard to capture there, but I mean. Truthfully, my own. One of my – the tuna was amazing. That that's that was like the most gratifying feeling. It was like I caught the fish. Yeah. But the, the, <laughs> but the best one was me and my, my, my girl were on the beach at 11 o'clock in the morning, and I got a small surf rig on and a – a 10 or a 12 footer. I can't remember which rod I had, which I had several out, but I had a, and I just put a big chunk of a, a real, an extra large big chunk, just saying, seeing if I might be able to get an early big red and caught an eight and a half foot, 250 pound uh, sand tiger. Oh. And only ca- Yeah. And on the small rig and only cast it out about a hundred, 120 feet. <laughs> I mean, I, I, mean I, I do not like being a spectacle with sharks. So that's why I fish at night for sharks, but, it was, I drew so many people, I had to get people to help me. I mean, this is a massive fish. So the tuna boat was the biggest one. And the second one was back in May when I hit this giant. I just couldn't believe it. Dude, that Huge. Would be... she, she, yeah, it was crazy. That would be <laughs> insane. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure that yeah. drag was like, oh, no, I'm done. Retire my reel. It's over. Oh, dude, sitting on the beach with a rod in between my legs, with my legs straight out, exhausted, just holding this rod just keeping it tight the whole time. It, it was, I was shocked. I mean, it was, that was fun. At nighttime, I can understand further out. I can understand, but 11 o'clock in the morning, these, yeah. those fish usually don't even feed until the dark hours. Yeah. You know? Within a hundred yards of the surf too, to make it even worse. It's like, Oh, that was close. Oh, even, oh, even closer. I mean, I, I don't think I, 
I don't think I threw it out 120 feet. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, so as far as reported catch, that, there's, the tuna was, that was, I was on my way to go fishing with my girlfriend, Wendy, and we were, we were having a good morning. We were pretty excited because we're going to the beach and all that. And I, I get a call from a strange number uh, about 11 o'clock. I, and uh, he said, hey, my name is Michael. And he says, I didn't want to just send you a random picture, but I'm going to send you a picture while I'm on the phone. And I don't know why I even answered the phone. I didn't recognize the number. It was a Sunday morning. And, and uh, he said, I just wanted you to know you ruined my fishing. He said something to that effect. You ruined my shark fishing trip. <laughs> and I was like, what? Because <laughs> he got out there and he, he set, got all his sets out. And then he put a, what, a 15, 16 inch live mackerel on a rod with using the redfish rig with a, with a larger hook. But even those swivels, those swivels for a tuna, I can't believe that swivel made it. So 400 pound swivel, but that swivel, I mean, wasn't even stressed out. And, uh, but anyway, so he wasn't there four minutes and hooked that and it dragged him 12 miles. (laughs) And, uh, so he, he came back they immediately bled the fish. They raced back to, uh, they were 35 miles offshore. And uh, they, they raced back to port while bleeding the fish, and uh, the fish was on its way to Japan that night. Oh man, that's a good payday right there. Yeah, I mean that's a fair thing. Yeah, still ruined. <laughs> yeah, oh no, he was joking. I mean, he was he was he said a mistake <laughs> tuna is because who knows what he got on that fish. Um, but I've since sent him some uh, fifteen foot and twenty foot uh, shark leaders that. That he a request that he had, and uh, I need to contact him and see how he did on the tuna. Because I asked him point blank, I said, "Man, you got to tell me what you got for that thing." So I won't know for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> it's like wicked tuna, but like, oh come on, tell me what the pound. Yeah, was. right, right. You right, get, you're right, living that, right. man. That, that's funny. Right, yeah, yeah. pretty uh, cool. So, what is a recommended weight uh, for fishing with the red ri- uh, with the red fish rig or uh, your shark rig? Do you have any recommended setup for weights for uh, for setting down? Absolutely. Absolutely, and I'm a slacker because I have the, the the most popular weights that I just haven't put on the website from another fisherman out of Texas. Um, I use a, a spider weight. Um, are you familiar with a, a teardrop spider weight? You I probably know the sinker guys. Okay, a tear, it's like a – it's not an egg sinker, but it's a teardrop, and it's got four stainless legs. So they're not like the – they're not the soft copper type. They're much stiffer. Um, so like a Sputnik, and it's, it is a Sputnik. Okay, it, it is a Sputnik. Um, but it's just a, a much more rigid. Uh, the legs are more rigid. But I, my favorite is a five and a half ounce for me. Now, if you're fishing, let's say it's it's mid October, and you got some big bull reds up in the rivers inshore, I'd throw a two ounce out. I would I would even throw a, a pyramid or a bank sinker on that, um, and and toss it in that kind of water. But I'll also on a on the like a shark rig, an eight footer, put up to a eight ounce, you know, eight and bait. You ever hear that term? Oh yeah, oh yeah, good one. You get yeah, right. So, uh, but I mean, you can go some of the custom shark leaders I do. You go all the way up to a pound. But but recommended for the small red, the the red or the small shark, I would say anywhere from two to five and a half or two to eight more really more like between four and eight four four and five and a half are my favorite okay and a sputnik. Those, are, those are my favorite and in the surf yeah, without side. It, with, especially in the surf a sputnik, i wouldn't even i wouldn't even bother with anything else personally just because i've you know i've i've gone out there and spent hours and getting you get rolled around and once those things grab they grab especially when we got really sandy bottoms here super sandy bottoms um and sometimes those undertoes I mean, we'll also, our water's different in yours. Our water's a little darker. You probably remember that from Goose Creek. Yep. Um, I like to just, I like to get a couple cranks, get that rod tip bent, really high, high line. And I, I do that with four and five and a half ounce weights. Five and a half is my favorite, but between four and five and a half all day long. Okay. So Sputniks are good for that. And I can see what you're saying with the pyramids and, the, and those pieces from there. Something to grab and hold. Oh, yeah. Even, lights. That makes sense. It, if you're dropping, you can, you know, cannonball weights, but, but Sputniks are my, by, by far my favorite. Okay. I actually just played with some cannonballs. That was an, that was a whole different ball game for me using cannonball sinkers. I'm like, I don't, 
I threw it, and I was like, this is going to be great. It's like throwing a musket ball, and then I just watched it. Right, right. Like, All right, cool. <laughs> well, there, there it went. <laughs> right, right. Uh, do you feel like uh, – I can't even speak English right now. Uh, what would you say the big difference is between South Carolina and other areas you fished? Uh, gosh, yeah, it's way different. First, first of all, baits more prevalent longer throughout the year. I don't know how it is in, in the panhandle with you guys. Um, the, the bait is so much more prevalent now. It, it's very shallow. You look on maps, it's extremely shallow. Yeah. You really have to find holes. You need to, you can get in certain areas. You get down into like Honey Island down that way. There's stretches of beach that you can walk out for 200 yards. Well, you see, you guys see that in Florida. I know you do. I've been, I mean, I've been to Jacksonville and, and way down in, in Lauderdale and, yeah. uh, and uh, like Boynton Beach and all that stuff. Just super shallow uh, for surf fishing. Um, I can see why people, everybody's getting on these boats. The the whole boat, you used the boat this weekend, didn't you? Yeah, that was a whole different ball. Yeah, like, huh? yeah. That ball, that yeah, went really that, far right. out there. Yeah, to to me, that just that sounds awesome. But I guess, I mean, what's the other? I fished from literally from Massachusetts all the way down to the Keys, nice. um, and and on the. I mean, I've been fortunate enough. You know, my I traveled a lot with my dad when I was a kid. And, you know, he'd say, hey, you want to go fishing? And he didn't even like it the way I did. But I've, you know, done trolling for blues in Maryland to um, uh, fishing uh, head boats in Georgia and lots of lots of shark and red fishing in Georgia, which doesn't have as many beaches, at least the places I've been to. I, I, it's kind of hard to say what the, the biggest difference is because um, I, I still feel at home on any beach. I don't care where I am. I don't care if it's Cape Cod or, or Rhode Island or I lived in Connecticut on the beach for years and that was really the sound and yeah. that was a uh, murky and sharper bottoms and and a uh, more finicky fish and in the toothy blues um, to me what what's different for me from what I did so much in the northeast because I grew up in the south and then moved up there for 20 some odd years what's different for me is where I really started getting to be a decent fisherman I was in the Northeast in my 20s, my late 20s. But down here, I kind of had to learn a lot of things over, you know. Um, there wasn't, wasn't as much information on the Internet. But just for me, the biggest difference is that I just changed my whole direction. To, I just started chasing big reds, and I didn't care about the small ones. They were delicious to eat, but all I just got addicted to wanting to get big redfish. So to me, the biggest difference is nice long seasons. A fall season that is incredible weather-wise, fishing-wise, everything, which is like that pretty much anywhere. But the weather to me in, in the South is just amazing. But it's that's a tough question. But I just for me, the biggest difference for me was having to learn a lot of stuff all over again. Oh, it makes sense, man. I mean, fishing yeah. is different no matter where you go. I, I, and that's something I've learned. You know, I, I, what I do in what I do in Connecticut or Maine when I'm up there visiting family, you know, it's not the exact same game I can play down here in the panhandle. Yeah, I, I know I have to, I've still got, I can look for rip currents and all that stuff, but there are still keys to those areas that, you know, really, sure, really sure. come up, you know. I'm not going to go up into, uh, right off of Groton Long Point in Connecticut and throw out a, you know, five ounce Sputnik because I know there's right, right, right. tons of rocks down there. Oh, you'll, like, yeah, you'll never get it back. <laughs> nope. And that's within like 20 yards. It's like, uh, no, yeah. that, that, that ain't yeah. happening, buddy. You're, you're going to need to throw probably a cannonball or something that you're going to get back. But or, it, a ba or a bank sinker or, or something bank. like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, you know, but if I run down to like the outer banks, I could probably play a couple spots with some Sputniks or, you know, I got to find a little bit of a soft bottom. But that's one of the great things about fishing different areas is there are so many different things things and learning is just such a huge aspect of this in my opinion uh to know when you go to these areas what more to do and just like south carolina you know i know i can go up into goose creek and i can go play in the back marsh I'm like all right i can get a red let me just go grab some shrimp or let me mm -hmm. go grab some mm -hmm. uh some shiners and all right let's play the game look look for some spots and like all right go catch me something you know, but right. I'm the same one if I go to the surf, I mean, whew, okay, got to be ready for this. We got a little bit of different water to play with. You know, we got different zones to go. So I think that's, I think it's great, man. I, I love the fact that you've been able to play that all the way from, the, you know, the North New England all the way down to the Keys. And that's, oh, that's and, you, and, you, and you got to do it every day. I mean, you can't, oh, yeah. none of us would know it. I mean, that's, I mean, it's like being a kid all the time. I mean, it's, I learned more stuff 
I mean, every year I learn so many more things. Uh, there's just so much. We have so much more information now. When I was fishing as a kid, you didn't. You listened to what everybody told you. Right. You didn't. You know, and half the time people weren't telling you the right thing. And maybe they were when you were a kid, but when you're an adult, some some people are telling you, some aren't. But nowadays you can research it. I mean, I learned how to fish for big reds online. That sounds insane. But the first trip I went with my main fishing partner, partner, we caught the smallest bull we caught in four days was uh, 38 inches, and that was the smallest one we catch in four. Uh, caught, no, in five in five days we caught like 16 just from the beach. Never, never targeted. This is several years ago, but never targeted just big redfish until that trip, and I learned it all online. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's yeah. all the knowledge, man. That's I mean, it's, it's free now. I mean, take what you can when you can, I guess. I, and I get it because that, hell, that's how I learned how to surf fish first. I have right. online and right. then up application. So, uh, two more questions for you. We're going, we're going to go personal here. We're going to go Dr. Sure. Phil. What is go your favorite it. thing about fishing? Um, the funny you mentioned doctors. Um, I used to say they're cheaper than it's cheaper than doctors, but that's not true. <laughs> no, not anymore. <laughs> not even a little now. No. <laughs> um, the freedom, man. It's my, the first boat I ever owned, and I don't even own one now. I, I, to me, a, a good beach card is just as good as having a boat. But the first boat I ever had was I lived on the Long Island Sound in Connecticut, and I named that boat Sound for after Long Island Sound Therapy. Sound therapy nice. was the name of my boat. So what it does is it, it all your just you hear it from everybody. All your problems are gone. It's the the the, the smell of the water, the the wind, the beach. It, uh, it's what it's what I really what I why I gravitated to more land fishing than I did boat fishing, which I did for so many years. Um, just the freedom of it. The problems go away. I, connecting with. Connecting with the water, connecting with the, the out. I love the outdoors, but if there's not water near it, I got a problem. <laughs> I sadly understand <laughs> that. <laughs> that, is, that is true. That is truly, I mean, it's, I think we all, it has the same effect for the most part for most of us is not only is it fun with our family, with our friends, learning new stuff. It's just, it's, it's the, it's the most relaxed that I can, that I ever am during any time of year is when I'm out fishing. Nice, man. By far, and my 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 dad, my my stepdad, who I don't even like to call him my stepdad, he's been in my life since I was eleven. Him and I are best friends because of fishing, and that's doing his, his kind of fishing, not even doing mine. He he does stri- stripers on fresh water. He lives on the lake, and I mean it's you can't you just can't replace times outdoors fishing and and the freedoms that that. I mean, I, that's why I thank you. And I, by the way, I never thank you for your service. That's why I thank every man that I ever see because those guys and women allow me to be able to feel like that fishing. It sounds a little sappy, but it's true. Hey, man, I, I, I get it. No, no, not sappy at all. Any other no, good stuff. That, all that's, that. That, that's my favorite thing about it, without doubt. That's awesome, brother. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap this up here, but I got one last one. Is there any tip or trick you'd like to share with somebody new to fishing? Uh, that's part one, but the second part is, and for fishing in South Carolina. Uh, new to fishing? Learn what fish are eating. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Anybody will tell you that. Check out your local tackle shops. Don't look at it as, at as it being a Bible, but take the good stuff you get out of it. And research the area, research South Carolina, which is when I moved back here, I was like, I got a lot of work to do because I haven't fished this area <laughs> in years and years. And you do have a Re- lot of, you got a lot of shoreline down there, do you too? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but find out what fish you're eating, what times of year. Um, listen to your local tackle shops. Facebook groups, I got to tell you, I've never, the last two years, I'm more involved with Facebook groups. It is the coolest thing ever. Yeah. There can, there can be a ton of nonsense that comes with it, but there are so many cool people out there. I have learned more things and tried more simple products, sophisticated products, whatever you want to call it, just from Facebook groups. So my answer to you, I don't care if you're going to Timbuktu, is research the area and, and what you want to fish for. 
and, and find out what they're and know your regulations. Please know your regulations. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that's kind of a key right there that people no, forget. Yeah. Oh. I mean, they, we can put apps on our phones now that nobody's going to know every fish they're catching, but there's an app on your phone you can figure it out pretty quick. Know your regs. Yeah. Know your regs. That's, that's a big one. So you they could, change drastically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm loving fish rules still. That that one's become probably one of my favorite yep, go tos. Me too. Oh me man, too, me too. They did a good job with that app. I mean, they, I, they, and they've gotten they've gotten really, but they've really improved it in the last couple of years. I mean, really improved it. Um, that's a lot of work they put into that. Yeah, there is. That they put out a and, thing not too long ago for beta testing, and I don't know how I got lucky, but I got to play with it a little bit. Sent, and it was mm-hmm. great because I sent in like, "Hey, I'd recommend this, this, and this," and they actually responded to me within a day and like, "Hey, that's a good idea. We're gonna do, we're gonna integrate it with this." I was like, "Oh, oh, that's awesome." I, I I I need to do the pay service because the free service is that good. Oh, that I pay? really need to do the pay. service. I love the idea that they came up with yeah. for that whole uh, "Hey, shoot us a picture. We'll, we'll identify that fish for you." It's like, oh, mm-hmm. geniuses. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's they, they really got a good thing going. I think that thing will fly. I need to get in touch with them one of these days. Be like, hey, we need to talk because your app is awesome. Yeah, you should. You should. <laughs> you're good at that, man. You're, you're the one that kept that this for, you know, I remember answering. My girlfriend asked me uh, today. She said, how did you guys meet? And I said, Brian put this thing out on, on his group one day about businesses and, you know, in our in our in our genre, what, what we do for fun on the beach businesses are wrapped around it and uh that, that's how that whole thing came about but you, you should reach out to them you Absolutely. It's a, i love the small business aspect of our lives man i mean i just i, I really think it's forgotten about you know and, and how key it is you know but and that's why i'm so focused on that with this because even conversations like this it really shows of how important it is so yeah, we're going to keep that one going but Dude, Rob, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate you coming on and, and just chewing the fat with me on this and let me get some word out about your product and talk to you. I, I loved all your stuff, man. That was just phenomenal. It really was. I appreciate it. Cool, cool. So, Get some fish. Send me some pictures, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I got to do that. <laughs> yeah, you're right. All right, everybody. You can find Rob and Rogue Reels. You can find them on Facebook. You can also go to roguereels.com. And if you want to reach out to Rob, you can reach out to him at Rogue Reels Fishing at gmail.com so that is it for today ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for tuning in to finding demo surf fishing rob appreciate your time love it man looking forward to fishing with you and then everybody we will see you all next week take care take care